Hello and welcome to the All Rookie Podcast. Today is June 10th, 2023, and I'm your host, William Harris, aka William is Bill. Great to be back with you today on another special episode of the All Rookie Podcast. This is my favorite podcast that I do each year. I do a draft on player comparisons. A lot of experts hate doing player comparisons. I love them. You know, it gives the fan uh more of an idea of who these players are and who they play like and who they will turn into. You know, it's hard to predict. A lot of people get it wrong, and that's why they hate it. But I'd like to give you an idea of it may not necessarily turn into this player, but he plays a lot like this player. And some of them I do think may become that type of player. So we'll see. We'll get into it. I have 15 guys for you that I'm going to go over my NBA draft player comparison. So let's get straight to it like it's nothing to it. First, I'm going to start off with a mega one. (laughs) Keontae George. You've heard his name a lot in the draft cycle. He's a shooting guard from Baylor. Averaged 15 points per game, four boards, three assists, one steal, and he shot 34% from three. He is six foot four. You know, that's kind of the tweener size to where you are a uh, combo guard. He's 19 years old. The NBA kind of does not like combo guards, so they'd rather you be a straight one or straight two, unless you can excel at both. And I think Keontae George will be fine excelling at both or just being a all-star level shooting guard. My comparison to Keontae George is Donovan Mitchell. Now, when I'm comparing these players, I'm comparing them to where they are. You know, Keontae George, freshman from Baylor. So I'm going to compare him to Donovan Mitchell when he was at Louisville. Um, You know, Donovan Mitchell at Louisville, you know, Donovan Mitchell is three inches shorter. People forget that Donovan Mitchell is only six foot one. He plays like he's six four, six five, but he's six foot one. Uh, he averaged 16 points per game, five boards, three assists, and two steals, and 0.5 blocks per game. So if you look at the stats, 15 points for Keontae, 16 for Don, four rebounds for Keontae, five for Don, the same amount of assists, and Don averaged one more steal than Keontae but that basically their numbers are very similar three-point percentage very similar 34 and 35 percent but not only the numbers you know you can't get bogged down in analytics if you watch the tape these guys play alike and that's what's going to have me bump Keontae George up a little bit more on my next mock draft my next big board because comparing these two you see a lot of Keontae George and Donovan Mitchell and vice versa but Keontae if you don't know about him Like I said, shooting guard from Baylor, straight baller. He can shoot it from anywhere, score from anywhere, create his own shot. He has great athleticism. I really think he can be special. He can hit the step back three, not just step back, but the step back three. You know, he can do anything he wants in traffic, whether he's open or in traffic, getting doubled, any of that acrobatic shots. He plays like a veteran out there amongst college players. He has star potential. And I think if he can play the point, look out. But even if he can't, like I said, Donovan Mitchell plays the two, and sometimes he brings the ball up. Keontae should flourish in that role. You know, I think he gives good effort on defense. That's what you want to see. Uh, he, he moves his feet well, great speed. It allows him to stay with his man and recover, and he gets blocks. And he's a good passer, good ball handler. He has all the makings of a star in this league. And like I said, Donovan Mitchell – was selected 13th in his draft class. He should not have been. He was because he was 6'1". If he would have been 6'4", 6'5", he would have been drafted sooner. Keontae is 6'4". So let's move him up our draft boards. In my opinion, I will be. I'm really just waiting for the results from the... It's the last day of withdrawals for the European players. That is June 12th. So i kind of been waiting for that before I drop a mock. I don't want to drop, drop a mock draft. And then two days later, I have to change it completely because five guys drop out that I had in there. So waiting for June 12th for that. But Keontae George, Donovan Mitchell, player comparison number one. Let me know in the comments, like, comment, dislike, whatever, if that's a horrible comparison or not. If you don't know, check out the film. Maybe you'll become a fan of one or both. Next up, we have Jalen hood Shafino, the dynamic big point guard from Indiana. He averaged, he's six foot six, 
So that's the big part. <laughs> he averaged 14 points, four boards, four assists, one steal, and shot 33% from three at Indiana. Love his game. I did not find a point guard to compare him to, but I did find Quentin Grimes. He's a shooting guard for the Knicks. He uh, is six foot five from Houston. At Houston, he averaged 18 points, six boards, two assists, and one steal per game, and shot 40% from three. So those numbers are not directly correlated. Grimes is a much better shooter, three point shooter, especially than Hood Shafino, but their games are similar. You know, other than the fact that Jalen Hood Shafino is a point guard. Once they're in the half court, their games are very much alike. Um, <clears throat> Jalen Hushapino has much more playmaking skills, of course, and can do even more because he's a point guard. But both can create their own shot, create off the dribble. Grimes is a more of a lethal shooter. And we've seen him, you know, he's starting to flourish in New York. Uh, they brought in Josh Hart, so they're kind of stunning his growth a little bit, but he's playing well. Uh, Quentin Grimes was, uh, I believe, around the 25th pick in the draft. But having that point guard as a priority for Jalen Hushafino, that should move him up. Uh, I have him in the lottery. He's my 14th rated prospect, but I have him being drafted higher than that. So Jalen Hushafino, if you don't know his game, very smooth player, soft touch, great form. Um, and, you know, a lot of people are talking about Anthony Black this year. You don't hear Jalen Hushafino's name as much. Jalen Hushafino is a much better player than Anthony Black. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that right now. You, you have not heard that from anywhere else. I'm telling you the truth. Uh, I don't know why people are sleeping on Jalen Hushafino, but he can stop on a dime, create his own shot, hit the three. Uh, you know, he plays a lot in the mid-range. The NBA does not like that. They want you to either take it to the rack or shoot the three, but that's not an issue. You know, I think that will be something that he will be coached on. And, you know, it's, I don't look at it as a negative. If you can hit mid-range jumpers in traffic, you'll have no problem shooting threes. But he's a very smart passer and player. Um, you know, great size for his position. Big point guards seem to be the trend now. He will fit right in. And I think he'll be able to play the two as well. But to be getting a Quentin Grimes-like player somewhere between, I would say, 8 and 18, He's going to be a steal for someone in this draft class. Big fan of Jalen Hushpino, and I like Quentin Grimes. Next up, let's go to Jordan Hawkins, the 6'5 guard from UConn. Average 16 points, four boards, and one steal. Half a block per game, 39% from three. He's a lights-out shooter, one of the best three-point shooters in this class. Let me make my comparison. Richard Hamilton, the OG from UConn. He, he's six foot six. In his uh, sophomore season, he averaged 21 points, four boards, and one steal, and shot 40% from three. So the three-point percentage is right there. Richard Hamilton was a better scorer, you know, five more points per game, but everything else is very similar. But not only the numbers, they play the game alike. Jordan Hawkins move ex moves excellently without the ball. Running, 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 spinning you in circles like Reggie Miller and Richard Hamilton would do in the NBA. Rich Hamilton also did it at UConn. So, you know, Jordan Hawkins, lights out shooter. All he needs is an inch of space to get his shot off and launch it. Quick release. Does not need a lot of space. Um, I think he will fit in the NBA perfectly. Good defender also. Long arms help him contest shots very well. And you got to have that stamina to be running all game. So Jordan Hawkins to Richard Hamilton. Someone's going to be getting a steal in Jordan Hawkins. I just hope they don't only use him as an off-ball guy that just runs around and shoots threes because I think Jordan Hawkins can do a little bit more than that. Next up, we have Jarris Walker from Houston, another player from Houston, the 6'8", undersized big, average 11.7 boards, two assists, one steal, one block per game, shot 35% from three. A lot of buzz on Jarris Walker. Most people have him going in the top six or seven. For me personally, I have him mocked to go into the Warriors at 19. He's probably my 23rd ranked player. I think he's being overhyped. I think there's a lot of people following trends. I don't know why he's ranked so high. In my opinion, my comparison to him is Grant Williams. You know, he plays on the Celtics right now. We saw him a lot in the playoffs. But Grant Williams at Tennessee averaged 13 points, six boards, one steal, and two blocks per game. 
at Tennessee and shot 32% from three. Those numbers are very similar. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see these numbers as well on screen, so you can see that. But not only am I comparing numbers, their games are the same. Uh, Jarris Walker moves like a small forward, even though he plays the power forward. He can bang or play on the perimeter. In the NBA, will he be able to play power forward? I don't know. It's going to be matchup dependent. So it's going to be really hard for him to play small forward. So I think he could be in no man's land at times. Uh, I don't think he'll be able to be a full-time player or starter. I think it's going to be matchup dependent, but he will fill a role and be able to help a team. Like I said, like the Warriors, he'll be a perfect player to fill spots in on that team, keep the team going. He's not going to turn around a bad team and make them good at all. He will help a really good team be better, but not help a bad team, in my opinion. I think, like I said, Grant Williams, um, you know, I don't think Jarris Walker is a lottery pick, but, you know, I think, and, you know, Grant Williams, he also played much better in college. Um, he ended up averaging 19 a game for Tennessee in his next year. And I think Jarris Walker would have done that the same if he would have stayed in college. So we actually are seeing Jarris Walker were not at the levels that Grant Williams reached in college because he played, I believe, three years in college and Jarris only played one. But we're hoping he can get to that level and surpass it. Jarris Walker, good post passer, moves great on defense. A lot of people love his defensive acumen. Um Moves, like I said, moves great, recovers well. If he gets blown by, he recovers well, blocks shots. But I don't think he'll be a rim protector. He has strength and knows how to use it in a college game, but will that work in the NBA? We will see. I think he needs to improve on his post-up moves. He's not polished in that area. Sometimes when he can't get somewhere, he just turns around and throws up a wild shot or passes it back out or settles for a fadeaway jumper. And, I mean, that's just not good enough to be a lottery pick, in my opinion. But that's my comparison, Jairus Walker to Grant Williams. I'm very interested in your comments in that. If you think I'm crazy and Grant Williams is for sure a top five player and I'm just out of my mind, <laughs> but I see Grant Williams from Tennessee that now is on the Celtics, which is still a good, helpful player. Next, we have Kobe Bufkin from Michigan. Average 14 points, four and a half fours, three assists, one steal, one block, 35% from three. My comparison to him is Tyrese Maxey. Maxey a little bit smaller, 6'3 from Kentucky, 14 points, four boards, pretty much identical. Three assists, pretty much identical. One steal, identical. It's just uh, Buffkin averaged a block. Maxey did not really do the block thing. And uh, Buffkin is two inches taller. So these guys are very similar in college, um, except for the fact that Kobe Bufkin is a much better shooter, 35% from three to 29% from three. So, and they play alike. You know, Kobe's a left-handed guard, nice jumper, good three-point shooter. He has a burst of speed on his way to the rim. He can be sneakily explosive. You think he's just going to come through and do a finger roll and he'll just dunk on you. You know, um, great shot blocker for his size, moves his feet well and fast. You know, plays, he stays pretty much with his defender. Um, he really gets up in his man and tries hard on defense and gets it hard on him and has a lot, has super, has, <laughs> has super fast hands on defense, which helps him get steals and blocks in general, you know. So, and the Kobe Bufkin is raising, climbing up everyone's draft boards. He's climbing up mine as well. Doing this comparison show can also help you scout because you see, like in my mind, when I watch film, I take little notes like, hmm, he reminds me of this guy. Hmm, he reminds me of this guy. Then I come back and I eventually watch that film and I'm like, yeah, Tyrese Maxey. Tyrese Maxey is flourishing in the NBA. He's he's a player already that the Sixers have marked as untradeable at times. And, you know, that when they could have got James Harden, they said Maxey is off limits. He's not going to be included in that. So it's something to think about with Kobe Bufkin. That made me move him up on my board to where I had him around 24th. Just from original scouting, he's definitely in the lottery now in my uh, evaluation, you know, because I think the Tyrese Maxey comp is very likely to come true. And Tyrese Maxey was drafted around 21st, so he fell in his draft. People thought he would go earlier, but that's where Buffkin was. But there was no 
Tyrese Maxey for Tyrese Maxey to compare, and that's why he fell to 21. Like I said, 6'3", combo guard, NBA doesn't like that. But now we have a player that's doing it, flourishing, which is Tyrese Maxey, and Bufkin is taller. It should be a no-brainer that Bufkin's going to be a great pick in this draft. Next up, Maxwell Lewis from Pepperdine, 6'7", averaged 17 points, 6 boards, 3 assists, 1 steal, 1 block, 35% from 3. My comparison to Maxwell Lewis is Kevin Porter Jr., the 6'6 guard from USC. 10 points, 4 boards, 1 steal at USC, 0.5 blocks. Much better 3-point shooter, 41% at USC for Kevin Porter Jr. But Maxwell Lewis very much reminds me of him. You know, I think uh, he need, he's a sophomore. If he would have stayed till he was a senior, he, you would see a polished star. Right now, I think you see Maxwell Lewis, even though he averaged 17 and 6, it's still a little rawness there that when it's fully developed, you be you better look out because Maxwell Lewis is going to be really good. Um, you know, he's herky-jerky. He's a flashy two-guard, great crossover, and, crossover and array of moves to score in any way he wants, very athletic, great size. Um, sometimes it's hard for him to go by, guys, but that's just being 6'7 and a little bit raw. But has a nice layup package, very nifty with the finger roll. He's a little skinny. Like I said, he's going to be developing into his body, but he's going to get there. And whoever gets him is going to be a steal because he projected to be in the 20s in this draft. But he and Kevin Porter are both flashy guards with great size, can blow by you or make the pass. Kevin Porter Jr., better shooter, and can play the point. But Maxwell Lewis is on that trajectory to be as good as Kevin Porter Jr. or, or better. You know, it's flashes of him in his game. But, I mean, Kevin Porter Jr. was really good at USC. Um, the, the numbers don't really show that, but he was. Um, but Maxwell Lewis, if you don't know, now you know. So you if you're, if you're a team drafting in the 20s and you're like, people keep mocking us, Maxwell Lewis, who is this guy? There's a little bit of a comp for you. He just won't be playing point guard. <laughs> but next I have Kaysen Wallace, the 6'4 guard out of Kentucky. Average 12 points, four boards, four assists, two steals, and a half a block per game. Shot 35% from three. My comparison to him is Trevor Keels, the 6'4, same height, point guard from Duke. Uh, very similar stats, 12, 3, 3, and one assist, one steal, sorry, for per game. Uh, as you see, 12, 4, and 4, 12, 3, and 3. Um, Trevor Ke same height. Trevor Keel shot 31% from three. So Casey Wallace is a better three-point shooter. But Trevor Keels was is bigger than him, uh, about 25 pounds heavier than him, uh, much more of a fluid player, and much like just as good defensively. Like he moves his body well. But Casey Wallace, you know, he's a little stiff. People are concerned about his back at this point. They say they have him dropping down in drafts a little bit. I already had him ranked 26, you know, and I have a mock going 22nd. So I don't know if people are coming around to my evaluation <laughs> and seeing that he's not necessarily a top 10 pick. I definitely don't think he is um, because Trevor Keels was drafted 40th by the Knicks last year, and he looked better than Kaysen Wallace in his one year in college than Kaysen Wallace did. And Trevor Keels did not play at all, really, this year for the Knicks. So it's going to be very team dependent on which team Casey Wallace goes to because if they have a guard, how's he going to play? I, I mean, I really, I'm really asking. The only way he will get to play is if, you know, they he's drafted so high, you have to throw him out there. But uh, I've watched film on the young point guard from Kansas state. He's five foot seven dynamic, amazing, incredible fa fast point guard. Uh, but he's, projected to go super late no no he's not even projected to be drafted he killed case and wallace uh you know so case i don't know how case and wallace is gonna do with the fast guards you know fat he has trouble with fast guards case and wallace doesn't move his feet that well you know he he got abused by the young man from kansas state so how is he gonna keep up with guys like De'Aaron fox and studs in the nba at point guard and the NBA is no days off in the point guard position. So I'm worried about Casey Wallace and Trevor kills, you know, he may get there. He just didn't have an opportunity with the Knicks and it's hard when you're a second round pick. So uh, 
But any team looking at Casey Wallace should consider Trevor Keels, and it hasn't worked out yet. And I don't know why Trevor Keels failed so far in the draft if you're going to be high on Casey Wallace. Next up, Trace Jackson Davis from Indiana, the 6'9 big man, averaged 21 points, 11 rebounds, four assists, one steal, and three blocks per game. My comparison to him is not exact, but Larry Nance Jr., 6'8", uh, Ford from Wyoming, you know, he's in the NBA now, of course. He averaged 16 points, seven boards, one steal, and one block at Wyoming. Uh, at Wyoming, he didn't really necessarily play like Larry Nance at Wyoming, but he plays like Larry Nance Jr. now for the Pelicans. You know, uh, Lance is a shooter from deep. He'll shoot the three. You know, he shot 33% from three at Wyoming, shoots a pretty good clip in the NBA. Uh Trace Jackson Davis stayed mainly in the post area. He did not really shoot any threes, but he's a very athletic big man, moves great for his size, runs the floor like a small forward, very similar to Larry Nance Jr., great rebounder, um, you know, can score off the dribble. His post game, he, he is one inch taller. That helps. But if he stays in the post and can be effective, uh, I think he'll be better than Larry Nance Jr., it's just you wish he was 6'10", 6'11", but he's 6'9". Uh, but I think he will have a pretty good path in the NBA. I have my 27th ranked player right now. And definitely in the 20s in this draft, he'll be drafted. So Trace Jackson Davis is not that many big guys in this draft. And you're having to settle a little bit for a 6'9 guy. But the closest player I could see to him right now is Larry Nance Jr. With a, he, But he's got a higher ceiling than Larry Nance Jr. But... A lot of teams clearly want Larry Nash Jr. because he keeps getting traded from team to team. Um, made me think of a fabulous line. But anyway, next comparison, Nick Smith from Arkansas, 6'5 guard, averaged 13 points and one steal per game, shot 34% from three. My comparison is Malik Monk, the 6'3 guard from Kentucky. He averaged much more points, <laughs> 20 points per game, but still that one steal per game. And he's a much better three-point shooter. 40% compared to 34%. But these guys play alike. Uh, you know, Malik Monk is more dynamic for sure, even though he's smaller. Uh, but, you know, they say Nick Smith was dealing with injury. So maybe once he's fully healthy, he can show more of that. Um, and Malik Monk is more athletic. Like that goes in the same vein. Uh, but Nick Smith, he he's 6'5", but he plays smaller out there on the court, in my opinion. But he's very nice with the floaters. Uh, but trying to get to the rim, sometimes he doesn't create a lot of space. And it's just a matter of, you know, he had a knee injury. So we're going to have to know more information about that knee. Is he Was he playing at full strength? Was the knee bothering him? We may never know. But if he has more burst, I think he'll be better than I have him projected. He's my 30th ranked player right now. It's hard to fit him in a team between 20 and 40. So I have no clue where he's going to be drafted. Some people are saying lottery. I didn't see that from the NBA, from his film. And I don't see that as far as the NBA. If he's Malik Monk, Monk keeps getting one-year deals. He was very effective with Sacramento, but the two teams before did not really care to keep him. So how wanted will Nick Smith be? We will see. He can light it up when he's hot from three. He's kind of your typical streaky shooter, you know, I wrote down he's similar to Bones Highland a little bit, who got disregarded from the Nuggets. You know, they they just gave up on him for not much. So Nick Smith, he has an interesting path. I'm rooting for him, but I don't I don't really see anything too special about him yet. Let's hope he will show that at the next level. Next, we have Turquavion Smith from NC State, 6'4 guard. Average 18 points, four boards, four assists, one and a half steal per game, and a half block per game. Shot 33% from three. Comparison, very similar numbers to Jamal Crawford back in his college days. Six foot six, 17 points, three boards, four and a half assists, one steal and one block per game. Shot the same 33% from three as Terquavion Smith, and Jamal Crawford did that at Michigan. Um, Jamal Crawford... Uh, you know, he, they're both heat check players with a great handle. They can pull up from anywhere, uh, score first guards, uh, lethal scores, and not necessarily great shooters. 
So, so I mean, that's pretty much narrows them both down. You know, Terquavion uh, may be more of a one, and Jamal may be more of a combo guard, but Terquavion needs to get better at getting an assist. That could have been because he was at NC State and not playing with other NBA talent. But if he goes to the pros, I need to see him more be more of a pass team oriented pass first, probably point guard. Otherwise, he's gonna be a Jamal Crawford type to come off the bench and light it up. He's very fast, quick twitch guard, gamer, clutch player, excellent in transition, just like Jamal Crawford, and deep range. I mean, he shoots beyond deep range <laughs> but that's that's good when it goes in not so much when it's not so if he's a late first early second round pick he's not going to have the reign to shoot those threes whenever he wants he's going to have to be more reined in and calm down unless he likes it up like Jamal Crawford who had a very long career in this NBA so Cravion can too uh, I think they should call each other and uh he should get some advice from Jamal Crawford for sure. Nice comp there. Next up, I have Derek Lively. Everyone loves Derek Lively, the center from Duke. And I thought I would too until I saw the tape and the numbers. <laughs> but Derek Lively, the seven foot one center from Duke, averaged five points, five boards, and two and a half blocks per game. Jackson Hayes is my comparison to him. The 6'11 big man from Texas, averaged 10 points, twice as much. Five boards, the same and 2.2 blocks per game, almost the same. Um, and he was drafted like sixth in his class around six or so year, years ago. But, you know, they're both rim runners, excellent shot blockers, long and skinny, and they run the floor amazing, both alley-oop threats, long wingspan, and great shot contesters. But if you look at Jackson Hayes, some of you may that are listening right now may have not even heard of Jackson Hayes. He's been on the Pelicans his whole career about five or six years, he started to get minutes because he was drafted six in his rookie season, maybe second season. But then the team went another direction, and he's kind of been on the bench just getting spot minutes. So he's not a priority for the Pelicans, the team he was drafted six for. Who do we think is going to make Derek Lively a priority that drafts him? Very similar players. His production was horrible. Horrible, <laughs> horrific, and terrible. I guess I was com- com- intertwining those words, but five points and five boards when you're seven one in college, that's not good enough. You, if you're gonna get only five points, you need to at least get 10 rebounds. I mean, come on, but or vice versa. But Derek Lively has a nice little baby hook shot, soft touch near the rim. Uh, you know, but he basically only dunks and block shots. That to me, that's not my cup of tea. That's why I have him my 35th ranked prospect. Um, but he's almost like scared to shoot at times out there. You don't want that for sure. Everyone knows that. Uh, but great defense, great leaping ability. He's gonna be a rim protector for sure. He's ACC all defense, but I just don't know unless he goes to the perfect team that's gonna give him the minutes if he's worth even a first round pick, you know, because he's not ready yet. (laughs) He's going to need at least a year to get there. But Derek Lively to Jackson Hayes. Comment, get at me. Am I wrong? Is Derek Lively top 15, top 10? I know a lot of people are anxious to get him in fantasy if he is drafted high because you're guaranteed those blocks and possibly rebounds. But I expect more. I expect more. Next up, we have Kobe Brown. You may not have heard of this young man, but he's six foot seven from Missouri. My 41st ranked prospect, 240 pounds. He's a little big guy because <laughs> he could play in the post or the perimeter. But he averaged 16 points, six and a half boards, two and a half assists, one and a half steals, and shot an amazing 45% from three. My comparison to Kobe Brown is it's not exact, but David Roddy. David Roddy was drafted last year around 25 from Colorado State. He is two inches smaller, 6'5". He averaged 19 points, seven and a half boards, three assists, one steal, one block per game, and almost the identical three-point percentage at 44%. Both uh, undersized bigs that can play the three or the four or the five in college, um, both excellent three-point shooters, drivers to the rack, uh, but David Roddy was a little bit more in the paint while Kobe Brown was more perimeter-oriented. 
But Kobe played at a better school as well in division. So I think his game will translate very well. Kobe's more smooth of a player than David Roddy. He was a little clunky. And so I think you've seen David Roddy. He was a first-round pick. So there's no reason Kobe Brown should not be a first-round pick besides this class is a little bit deeper. So if he falls to around 41 or so, somebody's getting a steal because this is a guy that could do it all. And if you want him to be a small forward, have him lose 10 pounds. David Roddy had already lost pounds, and that helped him be more effective in his rookie season. Kobe Brown can go from 240 to 225 and be a strictly a small forward with a little post game, or he can stay 240 and get to 250 and play more in the post. So teams are going to want that in the NBA, especially with that shooting. 45% from three, that's like the best in this class. That's like the best in any class. <laughs> like you don't see guys that shoot 45% from three that often but he was pretty much the perfect college player um and i think he will flourish in the nba like i said at six seven is much better than six five i did not think david roddy should even be drafted last year and you know he played pretty well so you can't hate um but kobe can drive it to the rack good passer excellent passer you know he he uh, sets up his teammates very well in college and he's a great creator off a of turnover so kobe brown i'm a fan of I could see him being drafted anywhere between 30 and 45. That should be probably his range. Up next, a guy everyone's talking about. I don't know why, but they are. James Najee, you know, I mean, because uh, when certain shows talk about him, everyone follows. But James Najee, I have him as my 53rd ranked player, as while other people's having him have him 20 and 30 spots higher. But he's just big and fast and strong. That's why. He averaged four points per game. He averaged two rebounds per game. He averaged a half a block per game. That's even more pedestrian than Derek Lively. But you, I will have to say, he only played nine minutes per game. So people are going by potential and what they can see and trying to project. James Najee, I have him being compared to Yudoka Azabuki. The seven foot center from Kansas, who averaged 14 points, 10 and a half boards, two and a half blocks, and 28 minutes per game. So, you know, you add that up, the numbers are probably close minutes wise versus production wise. But Yudoka Azabuki was drafted in the late in the first round by the Utah Jazz. He never really has played in about three years. He's never really played. He's been hurt a lot. But when he did play, he didn't look that great. Because and and you know he wasn't necessarily even raw. Um, he, he he played well in college, um, but you know comparing the two, James Najee is more athletic. He's more he's he's bouncier, but Yudoka was much more productive and experienced than James Najee. So I don't think James Najee is going to come on to any team and just start and to be the starting center and be productive. He's raw, like I said. He pretty much can only run and dunk, <laughs> but he runs the floor amazing. He blocks shots amazing, uh, but like he has the potential to block shots, but he jumps at everything. So he's going to get fouled out or in foul trouble very easily because he's not that court aware yet. He's like I said, he's raw. Um, you know, that'll get you in foul trouble real quick. But everyone's loving the workout videos, you know, with him with no shirt on. He's ripped. He's got the size, the athleticism, the speed, the dunking and all that. But you got to have talent and skill to play this game as well. We've seen it now. You know, you can't just be big and strong and can't shoot. Today's NBA, you got to be able to score in some capacity. So we'll see. I'm not that high on James Najee. I mean, I, I think you can get – Players like him come a dime a dozen these days. So I would not take him in the first round. We'll see what happens. Next up, I have a guy you never heard of. Trust me, you never heard of Nadir Hippie. Or if you want to say that's like Wi-Fi, it's Nadir Hi-Fi. But H-I-F-I. Fun, fun, fun player from France. Average 17 points, three assists, and one steal per game. And shot 35% from three. Now, I'm telling you, this guy, he was ranked maybe in the 90s by ESPN. And, you know, I've scouted over 100 players. So when a lot of the players withdrew, 
it moved him up. Like, I don't even think he was in the top 100 until those 20 or so guys withdrew. That moved him up. So I had to scout more people. But that's fine. I see Nadir Hippie, and I'm like, whoa, this guy should be drafted. He's excellent. He's an excellent point guard. Who I compare him to? Not just anybody. Fred Van Vliet, the six-foot guard from Wichita State. He averaged 12 points, three boards, six assists, and two steals in his senior season at Wichita State. And he shot 38% from three. Nadir's numbers are better. Um, except for steals and three-point percentage is a little bit lower. But his point is 17 compared to 12. Now, a lot of people are saying, you got a guy that was that's barely considered draftable, not even close to considered draftable by most, comparing him to Fred Van Vliet. Are you crazy? I'm not crazy. You have to watch the film, and you also have to remember, I'm not comparing him to Fred Van Vliet for the Raptors. I'm comparing him to Fred Van Vliet when he was at Wichita State. The same Fred Van Vliet that went four years to college, not one and done, not two, not three, but four years in college, and he went undrafted. Not only was he a senior, he went undrafted because he's six foot tall. Nadir Hippie, there is debate about his size. I've seen six foot. I've seen six one. I've seen six two. I've seen six three. So he's somewhere in there. I'm going to say six two for now because the most I've seen is six one and six three. So I'm going to put him right in the middle at six two. But he's excellent. He loves to step back and the hesitation, good, good penetration, makes great passes. Uh, the difference in these two guys is Fred was a much better passer and he played the game at a slower pace, more patient, more half-court dominant, not that flashy. If he needs to pass more and get more assists, but if he can get an opportunity, he can be really good. Um, you know, what better team to pick him than the Raptors? Whether Fred stays or goes, he can learn from him, you know. Uh, Hiffy moves very fast with the ball. That's a big difference between the two. Much faster than Fred Van Vliet. And Fred Van Vliet is not like he's slow. He's purposefully playing at his pace. Hiffy plays at a much faster pace, hard to guard, has a great crossover. His penetration allows him to score and get easy buckets for his teammates. I'm very excited about Hiffy. Like I said, June 12th, we'll see all the international prospects that will withdraw and that will stay in the draft. If he stays, I'm going to have him being drafted because he's that good. And if you can get him late in this draft, you know, like I said, Fred Van Vliet, undrafted. The Raptors picked him up, developed him, and look what they have now. The same could be done for Nadir Hiffy, whether he's drafted or undrafted. Look out. Next up, I have my last prospect. I saved him for last because this comparison is a little bit more of a stretch. But I see it. I see the potential. Imani Bates, and he's a guy that's still getting swept under the rug. I don't like it. He's still in the, ranked in the 50s in ESPN. It's ridiculous. But Imani Bates, 6'9", multi-positional player from Eastern Michigan, averaged 19 points, six boards, one and a half assists, 0. 0.6 steals, 0. 0.5 block, and shot 33% from three. My comparison still is to Brandon Ingram. Exact same size, similar points and rebounds at 17, 7, two assists, one steal, one and a half blocks. Brandon Ingram is a much better three-point shooter at 41%. And these are Brandon Ingram's number at Duke compared to Imani Bates' numbers at Eastern Michigan. I'm not comparing him to Brandon Ingram for the Pelicans, who's like an all-star caliber player. I'm saying Imani Bates has the tools to get there, Um, you know, Brandon Ingram obviously played at a better school, better conference, was a better shooter. Imani took a lot of bad shots. He was the guy. He didn't have any discipline there. He could do whatever he wanted. He played street ball. The comparison is right now he's like a street ball version of Brandon Ingram. I did a breakdown on Imani Bates and Brandon Ingram uh, about a month ago. You can look back on that to get more in-depth on – well, the breakdown was on Imani Bates, and I mentioned how he – it's like a street ball version of Brandon Ingram. But, you know, same height. The offensive game for Imani Bates, the ceiling is limitless. It's not, it's a little clunky, though. So, you know, he's he's very skinny. Uh, let me see. Imani Bates only um, weighs 190 pounds. To be 6'9", you need to be in the 200 pounds. 
you know, he's down there with Sequavion Smith's <laughs> uh, weight class. So part of that is what makes it look a little clunky, not so smooth. But if Imani Bates, imagine if he, you know, gets with the Suns. People say he's going to be a second-round pick. The Suns have a pick around 40. And imagine if he can learn from Kevin Durant. Imagine if he goes to the Pelicans and can learn from Brandon Ingram or just gets with a good coach that can help him develop, won't be a lot of pressure. He can learn and practice every day, learn in the G League, get bigger. He has star potential. He's been destined to be a star before he was in the NBA. Look out for Imani Bates. If he gets there, you know, he's got to want to. He's got to have his head on straight. He's got to get to a team with veterans that can point him in the right direction. And if they do, look out. Now, I hope you like my show on draft comparisons. I'll go ahead and name them over real quick in case you stepped out of the car and missed anything. Keontae George to Donovan Mitchell, Jalen Hood Shafino to Quentin Grimes, Jordan Hawkins to Rip Hamilton, Jarris Walker to Grant Williams, Kobe Bufkin to Tyrese Maxey, Maxwell Lewis to Kevin Porter Jr., Kaysen Wallace to Trevor Keels, Trace Jackson Davis to Larry Nance, Nick Smith Jr. to Malik Monk, Terquavion Smith to Jamal Crawford, Derek Lively to Jackson Hayes, Kobe Brown to David Roddy, James Naji to Yudoka Azabuki, Nadir Hiffey to Fred Van Vliet, and Imani Bates to Brandon Ingram. Thank you all so much for listening to the All Ricky Podcast. Glad to be back with you guys because I took about a week or so to do this show because I've been trying to give up, gather information in any day I can to put out a good show, but I'm not just going to reach for anything and just put out some crap for you guys. Took a lot of research and time into this. Hope you enjoyed it. A lot of work, but it's still my fun. <laughs> it's still my most fun to do this episode. I still didn't say that right, but you get what I'm saying. Subscribe, like, rate, review. I, I'm, I'm losing my words, so I'm going to get out of here, y'all. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I'm out of here. Peace.